I'm here with Chris Lindblom from Mark 7 Reloading. In this video, we're gonna talk about Mark 7 products for 2021. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm here again with Chris Lindblom from Mark 7 Reloading, and we're here to talk about 2021 and Mark mm -hmm. 7, state of affairs, new products, how you guys are dealing with fulfillment amidst this whole crazy thing, which we just did a video on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's fresh in the mind. Um, yeah, so Mark 7, you know, being what it is and all the different components and stuff like that and being, you know, what 2020 was and how the demand increased mm -hmm. and all that stuff, um, fulfillment was everybody's biggest issue. Sure. Fulfillment from, you know, having our, you know, small manufacturing companies that we work with fulfill our components so mm -hmm. we can assemble and fulfill our own components within our own factory. So fulfillment for this or fulfillment for Mark 7 in general has been a challenge. It mm -hmm. has. But, you know, lucky for us, we have our own facility, we have our own manufacturing, our own engineering, our own things that we can do to kind of make that that issue kind of a little bit less mm -hmm. a little bur less burdensome for us. So, so Mark 7 is headquartered in Florida and yes. Lyman is headquartered in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. You were telling me that, that you had to do some load balancing with manufacturing and some yeah. shifting of, of people and resources Yeah, there. so originally, I mean, Mark 7 was fully outsourced when it comes to manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So before we acquired them, pre-2019, we, you know, Mark 7 was completely manufactured outside in small little manufacturing companies outside of uh, the Mark 7 facility. Mm -hmm. And then it was assembled inside. You know, what that does is that increased costs because obviously there needs to be some A to B costs. And then on yep. top of that, there's lead times that you have no control over. There's yep. issues that, that run up. So one of the biggest things that we decided when we were looking at the company in general and the product in general was, can we bring that inside, in-house? Yes. So our plan from day one was, you know, yes, we can and we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and 2019, we started doing that, you know, slowly working in, you know, parts and stuff. It takes time to, you know, disassemble, you know, deconstruct this whole thing and then, mm -hmm. you know, try to rebuild it ourselves. So <clears throat> 2019, you know, we started slowly incorporating our alignment facility into crafting some of these or manufacturing some of the pieces to mm -hmm. the Mark 7 machines. And then 2020 hit and... Mm -hmm you know, pretty much put a huge wrench into that whole operation. <laughs> the monkey wrench, as yeah. it were. <laughs> a wrench or a flu, I don't know, it did something, so it did something. It did something and it affected everyone. <laughs> something happened and it affected everyone. Yep. Um, but we were still able to bring a lot of this in-house. And what I mean mm -hmm. a lot, you know, we went from full assembly down in our Florida facility to now we do our, what we call consumer products in our alignment facility in Connecticut. And then down south is where we're doing the majority of our commercial mm -hmm. products. So. What's cool about visiting Lyman, I got to get the tour, and you're gonna to wanna to check out that video if you haven't seen it already, is that you've got the engineers in an engineering area, and then there's like this testing area like right cage. next to that. It's a cage. And then if you walk over, there's the CNC machines. So what a great place to be like a mechanical engineer, right? You can come up with an idea, you can spin up a part, and then you can take it into this essentially clean yeah. room. And I remember you guys were working on Primer Express at the time when I visited. Yeah. And testing, 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 all with this small group of people, tight-knit sort of, you know, commu corporate community, uh, if I you mean, want to call it that. I look at Spencer Carroll. Like, he's yeah. been on uh, multiple of your videos, you know, mm -hmm. the fact tutorials, the one he gives you. You know, I'll walk in and he'll be rendering stuff on CAD or like on a computer. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, he's back at assembly, right. making sure that when these parts are being assembled, they're being assembled correctly. Yep. And then, you know, he's over in machining, making sure and quality control, making sure that all this stuff's coming out correct. So like, you know, yes, I guess as an engineer, which I'm not, um, <laughs> that would be like in watching your entire idea come to yep. fruition to the extent. So you that's know, very different than working in a small company like Mark 7 used to be when it was founded and using CAD programs to design products and then essentially throwing it over the wall to some other company and then waiting for stuff to come back. And then if it's not the way that you envisioned it, you know, there's a whole nother cycle there. So what's cool about the complete, you know, one-stop shopping for design, engineering, testing and manufacturing is that that, that complete cycle is so quick, right? Yeah. Iterative design. 3D printing stuff, right? This is the this is the age and the era, and you guys have kind of married the two: the high tech uh, stuff that Mark Seven had, torque sense, auto drives, ten station presses, new new mechanical stuff, and then the 
manufacturing capabilities that Lyman had under one roof, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, I think, been a huge benefit, right? Yeah. We talked about um, in the last video about the pandemic, like yeah. to not have that external dependency, we can't get you this little fastener and therefore we're going to take yeah. your production line down. Uh, we're not 100%, <laughs> you know, in-house yet, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still some things that, you know, we, we send out to smaller because we just don't have, you know, the machines to fully do it yet considering the demand is up you know maybe soon and we're working mm -hmm. towards that but yeah we the amount of stuff that we've done to bring mark 7 in-house you know over this last year's is a feat that i cannot believe that yep. we actually did like that was you know the engineering team the manufacturing management team you know did a phenomenal job with what they had to work with in that year yep so, so let, let, in order to s continue this discussion, let's talk about Mark 7 products. So it was initially Revolution on the high end and Evolution on the more entry level manual press side. The Apex 10 was a really interesting exercise. And I know you guys have been working on that for well over a year now. Yep. And I have a video showing the overview of the press, the loading of the ammo, the assembly, and then another one with it side by side with the Evolution. So I've already covered all that. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the the process of going from evolution to the Apex 10. So, I mean, one of the, the obviously the, the Apex 10 is a, um, it, you know, it uses a lot of the components from the evolution. That's, mm -hmm. you know, apparent. But, you know, when it comes to bringing everything in-house and, you know, looking at some of the stuff that you know, maybe a small engineering team missed over the time because mm -hmm. again we were able to completely deconstruct the evolution and then rebuild it and we noticed you know things here and there and then you know just from getting the product out to everybody mm -hmm. and hearing feedback you know we decided that we needed to come out with a press that one we can you know build up and build the yep. scale and two you know functions more long term or is more efficient or everything like that the things that maybe were lacking a little bit in terms of when those presses mm -hmm. were originally designed. So yep, I think there's some misconceptions from reading the comments I got in my first two Apex 10 videos. And that I sweated on, and I <laughs> yeah. lost sleep over. By the way, guys. See, I think a lot of people don't understand that while the the billet CNC frame on the Evolution looks really cool, uh, there's this whole thing called design for manufacturing, right? And design for manufacturing is about multiple things. One is keeping cost <coughs> at a minimum, and another is about enhancing the product that you're building. So take this press frame, for example. This is cast aluminum, and everything is CNC machined. Whereas on the Evolution, you've got a three-piece assembly for the core press without the tool head, right? So you bolt A to B, and you've got a thousandth, right, possible uh, tolerance there. And then you bolt B to C, and you've got another thousandth there. So yep. at the end of the day, between the bottom and the top, you could be off by two thousandths of an inch. When you're talking about a precision press like this, that really matters. So while the cast, <laughs> while the cast frame might not look as sexy as a block of CNC machined aluminum, it's actually a better product. And yep. and then there's the tool head. There was a lot of unnecessary cost with a billet CNC tool head that's made from aluminum. Whereas if you do a casting, same CNC machining, you know, uh, overall process yeah. there, yeah. you're getting to the same result. You're lowering the cost. And you've still got the precision, and you guys were able to add more, basically. That's, that's right? what it comes more down to. More that you're getting yep. to. Well, see, you know, and I, I did, I saw a lot of comments and concerns about that, too. Like, oh, you know, they're just, you know, creating these products now to save money, make a buck. And they didn't, <laughs> you, know, you know, they didn't uh, transfer that to us. Right, right. That's not true at all. Instead, though, we decided that it's more important, instead of reducing the cost of the base price, to give you guys more benefits to the actual reloading process. Mm -hmm. You know, i.e. the secondary guide rod, the hold down die. You know, we made some adjustments on the primary system, obviously. It's yeah. totally re Rotor revamped. shuttle rather than a, a sliding bar. Yep. Exactly. So there's, you know, there's things within this. Oh, you also get large and small primer setups yep. for the press Large itself. and small swaging punches. Yeah, you get, so we military. give everything you guys are going to yep. need for the most part, all the basic components to be able to do your caliber changeovers and things like that where I have to order a whole bunch of parts afterwards. So, you know, because a lot of times, say, you're, if you're just priming, you don't need to order that much stuff for a caliber conversion kit. Right. Just priming, say you're going from, you know, 45 to 9 mil or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and say you're just priming cases or whatever. There's so many different needs that everyone uses these for. You know, we wanted to make sure that the, the actual reloading process was more efficient and more beneficial before we just reduced costs. So while there was some savings in that department, we directly gave them right back in yep. added benefit. 
Yeah, so lots of design changes and improvements, tweaks, and a comprehensive package, large and small primers mm -hmm. for everything. You've got large and small case feed tubes, and the case feeder itself, right? This is a huge step up. I'll say, when I first used this, so it's got variable speed, that's new. It's got a new type of sensor for the case height instead of the micro switch. It's got a metal bowl. It's got the, the back window where you can empty your cases almost mm -hmm. instantly. It's got a three-point mounting system. I mean, a reverse button, you know, if things get jammed. Have you ever had to do that where you've tried to pull the case out while the motor's working against <laughs> it or whatever? Yeah. Or even if you turn the motor off, it's yeah. like things are jammed up. You just hit the reverse button. It relaxes everything and you kind of you're off and gone. So it, anyways, I, I would encourage you, if you have questions about this, to try one of these if you can, because you'll see. The case feeder, <laughs> you know, you, I use all the other case feeders as well. I reload, I reload on an Evolution for a while. I was using different case feeders. The case feeder is a home run. I love the case mm -hmm. feeder, not just because I work there yeah. in a biased way, but, you know, it addressed a lot of the issues that reloaders have with yep. case feeding. And that's the the point of, you know, when you're engineering something, make cool new things, but they have to do something. They have mm -hmm. to be beneficial. Why else would we do them? You know what I mean? Like, yep. so in order to put that much benefit into that, we had to really address some of the issues, which were the reverse, yep. the, you know, the open port in the back, the mm -hmm. clear port in the back that you can actually view and things like that. So I remember asking Spencer, uh, you know, early when we were <laughs> yeah, discussing this that confidentially, question, like, hey, could you make a way to easily empty this case feeder? Because that's my, like one of my number one things mm -hmm. He's like, we got that handled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yep. I was just yep. counting down the days until I, I got mine. So that was fun. Okay, so for 2021, Apex 10 is some of the big news, but we also got this bad boy. Which is another, in my opinion, that is not on the market yet. Like, well, yep. this, this is on the market right now for sale. This I'm is saying, what, what's what, the serial number what, on this one? I, I probably one because this is the <laughs> <laughs> there we go people so, the first one in a box and it's right here yes <laughs> if you want to open it up nope okay well no you have to wait for the unboxing video for that <laughs> uh, we've been arguing about this for a minute okay. but he doesn't want to open it up so <laughs> um you know primer express yes auto oscillating priming system for i would consider it an affordable priming system mm -hmm. that's automated because everybody knows priming is the biggest challenge, a lot of times, the yeah. largest challenge. It's, it is. There's no way to really effectively automate it. There hasn't mm -hmm. been, um, unless you're you're, you're going to pay up. Um, and then on top of that, it you know there isn't presses where it just mounts to and you dump primers mm -hmm. in. As basic mm -hmm. as it is, what can you just dump a, a box of primers into and just let it run? Yep. Wasn't on the market. There's a bunch of different solutions for feeding primers, right? Mm -hmm. Lee has these little trays that you shake and then you shove it into the machine and they just kind of trickle down in. There's priming tubes. Uh, this is, I've seen manual systems where you oscillate it side yep. to side. RCBS had a system like that, but I've never ever seen a, a, a powered automatic oscillating primer feed system. We saw this at SHOT Show mm -hmm. in 2019. No, that was 2020. That was right before what, the pandemic. Whatever the last one was. <laughs> we didn't have 2020. We had tw uh, we didn't have 2021. We had, we had 2019. 2019. Uh, 2020. <laughs> right? So we, we didn't, didn't have, have one this we year. We didn't have this year. We had one we last year. We had it year. last year. What's and time? Then, you know? And, and then COVID and hit some, right some, after Sometime that. in the last five years, we showed <laughs> the, um, yeah, we had this there. We were showing it. Yep. And, you know. But this, it wasn't real yet. It was kind of like, here's a preview. Wasn't real yet. Yeah. Only, well, it wasn't real yet in the terms that you couldn't buy it. Yes. <laughs> but it was real and it was being worked on. And then again, you know, a big thing happened, which was 2020, which is the big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, 2020 happened and, you know, we had to wait on certain things. And then we were able to actually get it out this last month or so. Same time this one. Time frame. Apex 10. Yeah. yeah. Exact same time frame as when this came out. But, you know, this is super exciting to me mm -hmm. because, again, like you said, there really isn't anything like this on the yep. market. And it bolts right to the Apex 10. So yep. your primers are gonna get oscillated on the tray. They're gonna make their way down and go straight down to the shuttle area where it gets picked up and it gets uh, rotated and inserted under the case being primed. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so what is the uh, the current availability on this guy? Is it something that people can go to the website and buy? Today? Right now you can right now you can go and buy them. There is a back order on on them right now. The gotcha. lead time you're going to be looking at 
Don't quote me, actually. You know, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at like, the website. Let's say a month yep. to three, I would say. Like, I'll give, pin give a comment that. or yep. something with, with a link to here. Uh, they of are course, starting to build them, but, you know, again, there's, yep. you know, there's a, a waiting list. But get your orders in, and, you know, as yep. they come up, they will ship. So We can't help you get the primers to dump in here. No. I know you guys are all feeling the pain on that. It's an unfortunate thing. Things will eventually <laughs> improve. Yeah. Yep. But, you know, the biggest idea on this is you can dump your cases, you can dump your bullets, there mm -hmm. should be a way to just dump your primers. Yep. You know, when it comes to progressive presses, everything has got to be, you know, a fluent system. And mm -hmm. if there's a, a, a hiccup in the system, like you have to do something more with your hands manually, you know, I think that's a, that's a kind of a, 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 a non-benefit. Handling <laughs> primers say. is the biggest pain in yep. reloading. I, I feel like personally. And know. when you get into automation, which these presses, that's what mm -hmm. they're for. They're for you to be able to automate them at any time. You know, you're going to want that because you're yep. going to outspeed your ability to <laughs> pick up some primers of the tube. Yep. So. <laughs> okay. So that's the basic summary of 2021 and Mark 7 so far to date. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to have more Apex 10 content. You're going to have the Primer Express unboxing setup and loading video. That's going to be a really cool one to see. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris, for joining us. Appreciate it. That's going to wrap it up for this video, which means it's time for the outro. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the content I've got coming up. Also, links down in the video description. I'm on Patreon and I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. Any support that you show is most appreciated. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.